This is question A of the uh, December pure mark. We've got a rectangle here and we've got to find the coordinates of point A. Uh, so as you can see it's on the y-axis. tells us in the question that the equation of BC is 3x plus 5. Um, so if that has an equation y equals 3x plus 5 you know that the the line AD, this will have a gradient of three as well. Um, if it's a rectangle, obviously these lines are gonna be parallel. So if we want to do part A then, we, we can, oh, let's use a different color. So in part A, we know that uh, when you go across here, so going across, D, D's got the coordinates 2, 1. So that is two units across. And we don't know this height here, let's call it Y, Y1. Um, and we do know the gradient is three. So for part A, if the gradient of AB, sorry, AD equals three, then that is also going to be equal to, so three is going to be equal to this divided by this, because that's how you find the gradient. Um, so therefore y1 is going to equal six. So this height, this height from here to here is going to be six. So since uh, d has got a y value of one, if we subtract six away from that, that will give us um, a value a value down here of minus five. So the y-intercept of A is gonna be minus five. Y-intercept of A is minus five. And so therefore, uh, point A must be zero minus five. Now in part B, um, we've got to find the area of the rectangle. So let's do this on this big, bigger diagram down here. So let's just mark in what we know. We know that A is the point uh, zero minus five. We know that the equation of this is Y equals three X plus five. So if we wanna find the if we want to find the area of this rectangle, we're going to need to find the lengths of uh, two two sides, two sides that are perpendicular to each other, and then multiply them. When I marked uh, some of these papers, a few students had tried to find these uh, x-intercepts, but that, they're no use. They're not going to help you find the area of the rectangle. So there's no point no point finding those. Okay, we need to find the lengths of two, two perpendicular sides. So I would start by finding the length of AD. So the length of AD. Well, we've just worked this out. We've just worked out that that distance, if we form a right angle triangle here, we've just worked out this distance is uh, two and this distance is six. Uh, from part A. So the length of AD is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared, uh, which is the square root of 40. Uh, you could write that as 2 root 10, but I'll leave it as root 40. Now, um, so now we've got the length of AD here. We now need to find the length of either uh, this one here CD or find the length of AB um, and then we can multiply by root 40. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well let's let's try to find the coordinates of B. If we can find the coordinate of B, so this is why there's quite a few marks to this question because we've got to find, there's quite a bit of work to find the, the value of B here. To find the value of B we're going to need to find the equation 
of the line AB, if we can find the equation of this line, we already know the equation of BC. So we can, if we can find where the line BC meets the line AB, then uh, we'll know what the coordinates of B are and we can find the distance AB. So let's do that then. So if we, in order to, in order to find the equation of BC, sorry, the equation of AB, we need to find the gradient, the gradient of AB. Well, it's going to be perpendicular. Uh, this is this is going to be a right angle here. So it's going to be perpendicular to uh, y equals 3x plus 5. So the gradient of AB is going to be minus 1 third. Um, it's perpendicular to BC. Um, and we know that it goes through this point here. So it's got a gradient of minus a third. It goes through 0 minus 5. So the equation of AB is going to be y minus um, minus 5. I'm using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 here. Um, equals minus 1 third x minus 0. And so if we simplify that we've got y y plus y plus five equals minus a third x uh, so y equals minus one third x minus five so that's the equation of a b if we can find where that meets uh, b c which is this equation then we'll find what the coordinates of b are so let's do that. Let's find where where this line meets um, y equals three x plus five. So this is the equation of AB. This is the equation of BC. If we put those two equal to each other and solve, we've got minus one third of x minus five equals three x plus five. Uh, let's multiply everything by 3, so minus x minus 15 equals 9x plus 15. Um, let's get all the x's on the right, the numbers on the left, so minus 30 will equal 10x, so x will be minus 3, and y, well y is going to be uh, 3 times whatever x is plus 5, um, so if you do 3 times minus 3 that's minus 9, plus five will give you minus four. So B is the point minus three, whoops, minus three, minus four. Okay, so now we have the coordinates of B. So if I was to just do another little sketch down here, say we're scrolling up, uh, the point B over here is the point minus 3 minus 4 um, this point a was 0 minus 5 and we know the length of this line was root 40 we did that earlier and so if we can find the length of this line here uh, b to a um, then we can multiply it by root 40 and find the area. So the distance going across from B to A in the X direction, you're going to cross three there from minus three to zero, and you're going up one value because you're going from minus four to minus five, or you're going down one really. But anyway, the length, so the length AB, so the length AB, it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 10. So we now know this is root 10. So the area, the total area, is root 10 times root 40, which is the square root of 200. So the square root of 400, which is going to be 20. There's no units. You could just leave it as 20. Okay, next question. 
uh, binomial expansion. It's a bit of an awkward one, this one, because you've got to take the quarter out. Okay, the, the formula for this expansion is in the formula book. You've got to use the one with the one plus x. You've got to use the formula um, one plus x to the power of n because this is a half, okay? You can't use the a plus b uh, formula because that only works if n is an integer. So, so don't use that one. Use this formula at the top. Okay, the one in the formula book. But this only works if you have a one here. Okay, so what's stopping you having a one there in this question is that quarter. So you have to take the quarter out before you can use the expansion in the formula book. So let's, let's do that. If we take out one quarter, we've got will be left with minus 12x here, and it's still all to the power of a half. Um, if you're not sure about that 12, then just check. This times this will give you a quarter, and this times this will give you minus 3x. So now you've got to, you've got to remember that we have to do a quarter to the power of a half now. Okay, so don't forget to do that. And, and then you've got 1 minus 12x, all to the power of a half. So you square root a quarter, you get half. And now we need to do the expansion of 1 minus 12x to the power of a half. Okay. So if we're going to do that, we use our one, we use our formula in the formula books, which looks like this, 1 plus x to the power of n and so on. We use that formula, but we're going to let x equal um, everything over here, which is minus 12x. And we're going to let n equal this power, which is a half. So if we use that, don't forget, we've got to keep that half there. Okay, so we just, the working is just following on. We've got half times by and then just just use the formula but but put these values in wherever you see an x and an n so we've got one plus and then we've got a half minus 12x that'll be the first those are the first two terms and then we're going to have a half times by half minus one which is minus half and then we'll have minus 12x all squared now another important thing when you're doing this is to keep all of this in a bracket okay it's not just the x you're squaring you have to square the minus 12 as well okay so don't forget to put all that in a bracket and then that's over 2 factorial we need to keep going here we've got another term here was I think the question says first uh, four terms yeah so we need we need another term here um, so that's going to be a half, a half minus one is minus a half, and then minus another one from that is going to be minus three over two, or minus 1.5, and then we've got minus 12x all cubed. Keep it in a bracket, all over three factorial. Okay, so we're going to work out everything inside that square bracket and multiply it by a half. You could just type all this into your calculator, but we'll get a half times by 1 minus 6x minus 18x squared minus 108x cubed. So if you half all those values, the final answer is a half minus 3x minus 9x squared minus 54x cubed. So that's the answer to part A. Uh, let's have a look. What does part B say? Part B says find an, by substituting in x equals 1 over 100 into your answer, find an approximation for the square root of 22. Okay, so if we were to substitute, so for part B, when we put x equals 1 over 100 into our answer, um, 
we're going to get well this expansion up here i'll just write this out that that expansion remember that equals one quarter minus three x all to the power of a half so that approximately equals this because we, we, we there's other terms here but we stopped so from part a we know this approximately equals a half minus 3x minus 9x squared minus 54x cubed okay so if we put x equals 100 in wherever we see an x here 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 and here and work out what we get when we do that um, we will get on the left hand side we'll get a quarter minus three over a hundred all, all to power of a half which is the same as square rooting and that will approximately equal what you get when you put a hundred into here um, which if you type it into a calculator put in one over a hundred instead of x you should get 0 0.469046 okay just tidying up the left hand side a bit um, a quarter is 25 over 100 minus 3 over 100 is 22 over 100 so we have this okay and um, we want to find an approximation for um, the square root of 22 okay uh, so let's just move the next question out of the way a bit okay um, so this is the same as the square root of 22 over 10 because you can square root 100 and so if you want to just have an approximation for the square root of 22 you have to multiply your answer here by 10 okay so you should get this um, to four decimal places the question says so the um so the final answer sorry this is this is multiplying this by 10 okay so i just i messed that up sorry i should have left this as it was i think four six nine oh and so the square root of 22 approximately equals 4.6 and so it's 4.6905 to four decimal places. Just a quick point with these questions. Um, some people left their answers as 0 0.469 something. Um, if you're doing an approximation to square root of 22, square root of 22 is going to be between 4 and 5. Um, so you know that 0 0.46 isn't going to be anywhere near the right answer. Uh, so you wouldn't have got any marks in this question unless you multiplied by 10 um, because that's the only way you're going to get an approximation for the square root of 22 okay so always always remember to check your answer looks approximately right when it whenever you got one of those uh, kind of questions let's move on to question 10 we've got to use the laws of logarithms before you do any simplifying with logarithms it's always a good idea to move these powers up to the top here. So I would move that power up to there. That would be the first thing I would do. Um, and then I would get all the logs on one side. So I would write log a to the two cubed plus log a seven minus x. And then let's just subtract this from both sides. So minus log a of x equals 2 okay so what I've done there is is I've made it so that all the logs are on the left and uh, that there aren't any coefficients apart from 1 or minus 1 okay so now we can simplify these logarithms um, oh, well I'll just write I'll just write 2 cubed as 8 first okay and then you can use the laws of logs because when you add logs together you multiply them and when you subtract logs uh, you divide them so we can do because there's a plus here we can do this multiplied by this because there's a minus here 
we want to divide everything by this. Okay, so the left hand side becomes log 8 of 8 times 7 minus x all over x and that will equal 2 on the right hand side. Um, so we could do with getting rid of this now. Okay, now remember the rules of logarithms. If you have, say, log 8 to the base 2, that just means what power of this 2 will give you 8. So the answer to that would be 3. Okay, that's because 2 here to the power of this will equal, will equal this. So 2 to the power of Q, uh, 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Okay, so in the same way, this to the power of this will equal everything in here. So we can write that down, that um, 8 to the power of 2 will equal everything in the, in the big bracket there, will equal 8, 7 minus x over x. So this is easy now to solve. We're going to get 64 on the right hand side. If we multiply both sides by x, we're going to get 8, 7 minus x equals 64x. And so you can multiply out the brackets, 56 minus 8x equals 64x. So 56 can equal 72x, and x will be um, 56 over 72, which is 7 ninths. So that's the answer to that question. Question 11. It says find the exact coordinates of the stationary point of the curve y equals x ln x. Now you can see that this is two functions of x multiplied together. y equals a function of x multiplied by another function of x. So we're going to need to use our old friend the product rule here. Um, using the product rule, uh, I would let it doesn't matter which you choose for u and which you choose for v for the product rule it does for the quotient rule but for the product rule it doesn't um, let's let u equal x just move that over a bit so if we let u equal x um, du by dx is going to be 1 and v is going to be linux dv by dx is going to be the derivative of linux which is 1 over x okay so we'll use these rules now when we do the product rule product rule isn't in the formula book the quotient rule is uh, but the product rule is fairly easy to remember um, dy by dx equals u dv by dx plus v du by dx okay so let's just put in our values in the box on the right hand side into there um, by the way the reason we're differentiating is because we've got a it's a, it says stationary point there so whenever you have a stationary point question you're going to differentiate and put it equal to one sorry put it equal to zero and find the x values so let's carry on with the product rule then. u is x dv by dx is 1 over x. v is ln x and du by dx is 1. So that's just going to give us, these x is going to cancel, going to give us 1 plus ln x. So that is dy by dx. So at the stationary point, this will equal 0. So at the stationary point, dy by dx equals 0. So therefore, 0 equals 1 plus ln x. Rearranging this, we're going to have ln x equals minus 1. Now, the inverse of ln x is, is e. So if we do e to the power of both sides, e to the power of ln x 
and e to the power of minus 1. These will cancel to give us x, and we'll get e to the minus 1, um, which is 1 over e. So we need to find the y value now because it says this, the coordinates of the stationary point. By the way, it says exact coordinates, the exact um, coordinates. So we need to make sure that we, we don't change this to a decimal here. Leave this exact. Okay, it's fine as 1 over e. Now to find the y values, remember the original question was excellent x. And so if we put 1 over e in here, we've got 1 over e times by learn 1 over e. Uh, so that's 1 over e. Then learn of 1 over e is learn e to the minus 1. So these are just going to cancel. And you'll end up just doing 1 over e times minus 1. So 1 over e times minus 1 um, times minus 1. It's just going to give you minus 1 over e. So the final answer to this is the stationary point is 1 over e. That's the x value. Minus 1 over e is the y value. Oh, we've got to do part b yet. Uh, we're still not finished this question. Let's move this one down. Okay, so part B uh, is talking about, it's, oh, it says show the stationary point is a minimum turning point. So once you've found your stationary point, to check what kind of stationary point it is, you need to do the second derivative. Um, don't forget our first derivative was 1 plus ln x. So differentiating the 1, you get 0. Differentiating the ln x, you get 1 over x. And so at the point where x equals 1 over e, at the stationary point, the second derivative is going to be 1 over 1 over e, which is e. And so this e is positive. It's 2.718 something. So this is positive. And so because that's positive, that means um, that must be a minimum stationary point there, a minimum point at 1 over e minus 1 over e. OK, next question, question 12. Cyclist aims to travel a total of 1,200 kilometers. Now, it says total there. So that means you're probably going to need to use the sum formula. Or it's going to be a sequence. Because it's percentages, it's highly likely to be geometric. Um, and R is probably going to be 1.06. Um, and then it's talking about total here, it's talking about total here. So you're probably going to need to be doing the sum. At some point, you're going to need to do the sum formula, I would imagine. But let's just read what it actually says for part A, first of all. So it says, show that on day eight, he cycles approximately 18 kilometers. Now, that's not talking about a total. It's not saying the total um, after eight days. It's just saying on day eight. Whoops. So... With all these sequences type questions, I would write down uh, write down the sequence. Okay, so day one, day two, day three, and so on. We need up to day eight. Uh, so day one, the distance is twelve. It says it says up here, and then it increases by six percent each day. So we've got a 12 here. Then we're going to times that by 1.06. And we'll get 12.72. And then we'll multiply that by 1.06. 1.06. And that'll be 13.48.32. And so on. We're going to keep multiplying by 1.06. So this is an geometric sequence that's the first term that's the second term that's the third term 
and so the eighth term will be AR to the power of seven. Um, so it's a geometric sequence with a equals 12, r equals 1.06. And so on day eight, your distance is going to equal ar to the power of 7, which is 12 times by 1.06 to the power of 7. So write that in your calculators and you should get 18.04. The question says it's approximately 18 kilometers, so it's important you write this down and then you say uh, yes this is this is approximately 18 kilometers okay but you've got to show you're working out for those kind of questions where um, it, it tells you to show show that it's approximately 18. Part B okay so now this is where I found a lot of students didn't do the sum okay but you've got to read the question carefully it says he reaches his total of 1200 kilometers on day n that's the total of all the days uh, cycled so far okay so you have to do the sum formula for this so we're finding this the total sum needs to be 1200 and you want to know what day the the total will reach 1200 okay so we know a is 12 we know r is 1.06 the sum formula is this and so that means we're going to get 1200 equals 12 and then 1.06 to the power of n minus 1 over 1.06 minus 1. So that denominator is going to be 0 0.06. Um, so if, if we do 12, 12 divided by 0 0.06, that will give you 200. So we've got 200 times by this. Whoops, one point. 0, 0.6 the power of n minus 1 okay divide both sides by 200 you get 6 equals 1.06 the power of n minus 1 so 7 is 1.06 to the power of n and now we're going to need to use logarithms to find n um, so if we do log of 7 to the base 1.06 that will give you the value of n. So tie that into calculator, you should get n equals 33.4. So that means, let's just re read the wording carefully. It says he reaches a total of 1200 kilometers on day n. So on day 33, he won't have reached uh, 1200 kilometers. So he will only reach 1200 kilometers on day, um, on day 34 okay so it's day 34 so therefore n needs to equal 34 so that's your that's your final answer for that one then in part c it says the cyclist stops when he reaches 1200 kilometers find the distance he cycles on on day n okay so we know that between day 33 and day 34, the cyclist reaches that total of 1200 kilometers. So if we find how, how, what, how far the cyclist has totaled in distance on day 33, and then do the total after day 34, um, we should be able to subtract them. Or actually, it says he stops as soon as he gets to 1200 kilometers. So let's just find the total, the total distance cycled, um, cycled by day 33, and then we can take that away from the 1200, and that'll be how much he cycles on the last day. So that will be, um, 
we're using the same formula, the same sum formula, and so that's 12, 1.06 to 33 minus 1, 1.06 minus 1. Okay, so 200 times this. You could just type this all into calculator. Um, and you should get, if you type that in, you should get 1,168.12 kilometers. So that's the, that's the total after 33 days. And then it stops uh, when the when the total when the total is twelve hundred. So that means that on the last day, uh, the cyclist must have cycled whatever that minus that is. So if you do um, if you do twelve hundred minus this, that will give you. 31.88 kilometers and so the uh, the question says give your answer to the nearest kilometer so therefore distance I called on the last day day 34 is 32 kilometers right what we got next so have a look, question 13. Okay, modulus functions. Right, it says, it says sketch the graph of this. Um, I've got some axes drawn below. Let's just make this a bit bigger. Right, now it says we've got to find the coordinates of the minimum point and the point where it crosses the y-axis when we sketch this graph. So if we find think of the minimum this can ever be, well the minimum because this this means make it positive, uh, that's what the modulus sign means. The minimum this inside the modulus can ever be is zero. So the minimum is zero, and that will happen when x is three point five or seven over two. When x is uh, I just leave it as 3.5. Okay, so that's going to be the minimum point on the graph. So the minimum point is 3.5. Oh, sorry, the minimum is zero, but that means uh, the minimum y value is going to be zero from here plus one. So the minimum y value will be one. Okay, so if we if we look at our graph, if we plot that point down here. That would be our minimum point, 3.51. And now we need to find the y-intercept. So if we're finding the y-intercept, um, y-intercept is when x equals zero. So if we put zero into this equation, we'll get y equals two times zero minus 7 and then the modulus of that plus 1 so 2 times 0 is 0 the modulus of minus 7 is plus 7 and then we've got to plus the 1 so it's going to give us 8 so the wind set over here is going to be 8 uh, so I think we've got enough information to sketch do a sketch of the graph now um, these modulus functions Use, I use a V shape if there's no um, it's going to be a V shape because it's linear uh, that'll do alright so it's going to look like that so that's part A sketched and we've got the the important points drawn there in part B we have to solve the equation 14 minus X equals the graph we've just drawn okay I find it helpful to to do um, to do a sketch of this have I drawn it down here I've got some axes down here let's just make these a bit bigger then okay so the, the graph we've the graph we had before was 
let's just draw that in with a V shape like this. Um, now the line, I'll draw the line in a minute, but first of all, this right hand side, we've got two X minus seven plus one. Now this bit over here, the equation of this bit over here is going to be when this is positive anyway. Okay, so when x is bigger than 3.5, this is, is all going to be positive. So this, the equation of this highlighted line is just y equals uh, 2x minus 7 plus 1. So this is 2x uh, minus 6, the equation of that. And the equation, this bit over here, this side of the line, that will be when you have a negative, when the thing inside the modulus is negative and it's turned to positive. So that will be the equation of this, which is uh, going to be minus 2x plus 7 plus 1, which is plus 8. So the equation of this line over here is y equals minus 2x plus 8. Okay, so we go back to the original question. The question says, where does the graph we've just drawn meet the graph, um, meet the graph y equals 14 minus x? The graph of 14 minus x is going to have a gradient of minus 1, and it's going to have a y-intercept y-intercept of 14. Okay, so if we sketch that, it's going to look something, it's, it's not going to be as steep the gradient as the green line there, so it's going to look something like this. Let's call that point B, and this point we'll call A. All right, so to find the point A, uh, we're going to see where this meets our red line. So to find point A, point A, we're going to do 14 minus x equals 2x minus 6. So rearrange all that, and you'll get 20 equals 3x. So x equals 20 over 3. And then it says, no need to find the uh, y values. The question just says, uh, solve the equation. It doesn't say find the coordinates of the intersect intersections. Then point B, let's do this in a different color. So point B over here, that will be where this meets this. Okay, uh, let me just label this. This is y equals 14 minus x. So point B is going to be where 14 minus x equals minus 2x plus 8. Um, so that's going to give us x equals minus 6. So those are the two solutions to the question. And let's go down, oh, part C. Okay, oh, there is no graph. All right, right. Um, right, part C, it says, given that the line L does not meet or intersect the, the graph we've got drawn there, uh, the graph in black, find the range of possible values of K. Right, so I think it might be best just to sketch another graph. Let's copy this, paste it. Right, so part C. We've got our graph drawn. Here's our graph we've already got, okay, from part A. And the question is saying, the line Y equals a half X plus K 
question is saying it doesn't meet this black graph we've got at the moment okay so this has got a gradient of two if you look at the um, look at the equation for the original graph you can see why this would have a gradient of two it's got two before the x this would have a gradient of minus two and so this line um, isn't as steep as the others so this line would look let's do it in red would look something like this so it could look like this it could look like this it could look like this okay now we're trying to find um, the value of k where there is no points of intersection okay so if we find what k is when this happens when the two graphs do meet then we know to choose a lower value of k for our final answer so if we say this is y equals half x plus k here now we already know that this minimum point is minus 3.51 so where is where is that line going to meet where is that line going to meet this stationary point well at the point minus 3.51 so when x equals when x equals 3.5 and y equals 1 in other words at that minimum point um, y equals a half x plus k would give you 1 half times 3.5 plus k so that would give you k is minus 3 quarters k equals minus 3 quarters where the two graphs meet um, at the minimum point so that if we don't want any intersections at all that value of k would give us one intersection if we don't want any intersections so no intersections we would need to have k to be less than that and then you would end up with a line like one of these below the minimum point so when k there'll be no intersections when k is less than minus three quarters right nearly there uh one more question right part a is the old classic r sine x plus alpha or r cos x minus alpha in in this case okay always on exams these kind of questions to so make sure you know how to do these well part a it's the form r cos x minus alpha so the expansion for cos uh, a minus b is in the formula book you can do cos x cos alpha there it will be plus sine x sine alpha don't forget you got an r at the front so you'll get an r here and here as well um, now you've got to equate that to cos x plus 4 sine x so if we write that down below cos x plus 4 uh, sine x now this cos x matches with this cos x oh I'll just put a 1 here All right, so that's the same as 1 cos x um, there so that means since this cos matches with this r cos alpha will equal 1 so I'll write that down over here r cos alpha equals 1 and since this sine x matches with this sine x this 4 will equal r sine alpha okay now there's lots of ways of uh, solving these now um, if you divide these two equations you'll get tan alpha equals 4 it's important you you go through this process because quite a few students I, I noticed put tan alpha equals a quarter but that's not right okay 
if, if you if you go through this process remember whatever sign alpha is you need to divide divide sine by cos to get tan so the tan will be four divided by one which is four okay so then um you just do inverse tan on your calculator are we in degrees here let's have a look no we're in radians because you've got a pi there so make sure you calculate in radians um, and give your answer to three decimal places so alpha inverse tan four um, so you're going to get 1.326 okay and now r you this is uh, just using pythagoras this is um so r squared is four squared plus one squared so r is going to be the square root of, whoops, square root of 17. okay um the next question we now by the way whenever you do one of these questions you can be pretty sure you're going to need to do use your answer for, for for this in order to do part b or part c so it's worth just writing down that in part a our final answer was root 17 um cos x minus 1.326 okay so that is what um that's what cos x plus 4 sine x equals okay so if you look at part B, um, you can see that it, it looks it looks quite awkward, doesn't it? But it looks a lot simpler if you just replace that half t or t over two with an x. So if we do that, if we re if we just let x equal t over two, so let x equal t over two, then the equation becomes h equals twenty four over 3 3 plus cos x plus 4 sin x uh, which is good news because we already know that this here matches with that so we can replace this with this so therefore oops let's do it in blue so h equals 24 over 3 plus root 17 cos x minus 1.326 um, there's only two marks for this so you know you don't need to do too much work but the question says what's the minimum value of h well the minimum value of h is going to be when the denominator is at its maximum okay so you're going to need um, all of this all of this here need that to be at its maximum okay so you need the maximum denominator there so that will be at its maximum denominator when cos is is plus one so the cos function can't get above plus one so the minimum value of h is when cos of this equals my equals plus one okay so that means the minimum h is going to be 24 over 3 plus root 17 times 1 which is just root 17 uh, so you can type that into your calculator it says to near a centimeter so it's 3.369 that's meters read the question carefully lots of people didn't do this rounding off correctly that's in meters okay so to the nearest centimeter that will be 3.37 meters if you want you don't you can leave your answer like that that's fine that is to the nearest centimeter but you could write 337 centimeters if you prefer um, but you must have one of these two as your final answer um, and now it doesn't say when does that happen so let's move on to part C then part C it says find the value of t when h equals 10 okay 
So we just put h equal to 10. Let's, let's still let x equal t over 2. And so, and put, and h is 10. So our equation would be 10 equals 24 over, let's keep it as it, the same format it was before, where we use our value to, for part a, 1.326. Um, all right, so now we just need to rearrange this and find out what x is. So I would multiply this up here. Um, and well, I'd swap these two around really. You can divide by 10. So we've got 3 plus root 17 cos x minus 1.326 equals 24 over 10, which is 2.4. Okay, then I would subtract this 3. Subtract the 3 and divide by root 17. So cos x minus 1.326 equals um, 2.4 minus 3 over root 17. I just type that into my calculator and I get this. Okay, so then do inverse cos on your calculator to x minus 1.326 equals you should get 1.7 remember you're in radians here whoops 1.7168 and now i think let's read the question carefully because before we add that 1.326 we need to check do we need any more values here um let's just have a look at the top when h equals 10 no i think it just says the value of t so there's not going to be lots of solutions to this so as long as our value is positive this is, should give us our first positive value if we just add that over to the other side so if we add that over to the other side we get 3.04265 and we're still not quite finished because remember we let x equal t over 2 so t over 2 we'll replace x with t over 2 um, to get this and so t will be double that uh, so t will equal 6.0853 and what do we have to do to two decimal places so t equals 6.09 to two decimal places and that should be the answer to question 14